Donc, le prochain présentateur, c'est Yann Kumpan euh, de l'entreprise Artus qui va nous parler des nouveaux développements en euh, bathymétrie satellitaire pour les eaux optiquement complexes. Uh, good morning. So, um, sorry. Ah, here. Okay. 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 So um, I'm going to present our new development uh, in satellite uh, derived basimetry in optical complex waters. Oops. So. Um, as my colleague has uh, already presented yesterday, we have uh, um, AI-assisted STB solution in, uh, consists of uh, empirical models and uh, uh, physical measures. Um, he has presented the empirical model yesterday. I'm going to present the physical models. Uh, actually, in 2020, Actus obtained the funding from Quebec Innovation. And we collaborate with uh, CDOC to develop our physical uh, based model using AI. Um, to make it clear, uh, I divide this, mo this model into three layers. At the bottom, you can see is the data set layer. It's about the simulation of the data sets for the model training. And at the, in the middle is the is about the um, different models for different tasks and its training. And above, its um, application layer is about the image processing. So I will go through these uh, three layers, uh, but uh, not too much uh, technical details. So uh, we very often uh, speak of uh, uh, empirical models and uh, physical models. In my opinion, the main difference is uh, between this is uh, the data sets used for the model training or fitting. Like empirical models we use in situ data for model training or fitting, but our physical model, we don't use in situ data, we just use the uh, simulations. So here in our case, we use the um, water register transfer model for the uh, data generating. Here we use the model developed by about in 2003, and we also took the IOPs of the water from the researchers' PhD sets, and also we obtained the uh, uh, bottom reflectance uh, data provided from UCAR. So with this model and the uh, IOPs and the bottom reflectance, we generate a large number of data sets. Uh, for both optical shallow water and deep water. So here, just some uh, examples, the spectrum of the water reflectors from the data set. So um, the satellite can only detect the water depths for shallow waters. So the first step, we need to identify the um, shallow water, Op actually it's the optical shallow water, means that what the light cannot um, penetrate the water column and reach the bottom and return to the surface. So here we develop a, a U-shaped light, it's actually is a deep learning uh, algorithm or model. It's called a U-shaped uh, uh, neural network to identify the shallow water. The idea is, uh, is um, like uh, the optical shallow water can not only be identified by the water color, the reflectance spectrum, but if we have the context of the image, we may know which one is from uh, shallow water or which one is from deep water. So here, is a, just an example. You can see the two pixels from two different images. 
So the above one is from shallow water, and the bottom one is from uh, deep water. So we collect uh, um, about uh, 1,000 <coughs> images, image pictures from the northern shore of St. Lawrence River, and uh, we train out the model. You can see the training is, uh, is very good, both the validation and the training. The accuracy is, uh, is very high, more than 90% uh, of accuracy. Um, about uh, STP retrieval, we train different models. Um, actually, just the same model, but with different inputs. So the basic idea is uh, we, the more we have, the more we know, there will less the uncertainty of the, of the best metric. So we, we trained uh, four, four models with uh, four different uh, uh, inputs. For the last one, it's, uh, it's quite complicated. It's not the best one. Uh, one image is to use a time series, it's like a composite of the uh, uh, more multiple images. This is um, not a, we have trained that model, but the, we didn't apply it to image processing yet. Um, so the, for the single image processing, first we need to do the atmosphere correction. It's a kind of a pre-processing of the image to remove the atmosphere effects. And uh, we detect the shallow water. Um, after we apply our model to um, estimates the water depths from for the uh, shallow waters after do the tide correction to 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 get the final uh, best metry um i'd like to show some uh, case studies we have uh, uh, six uh, case studies we do the validation um we have uh, two sites from the upstream of St. Lawrence River, and one from uh, Franklin, one from Setil, and uh, from, one from Madeleine Island, and the one is uh, in Arctic region, Kukulukuk. Um, so this is our first uh, case study. This is uh, Bejeno. Okay, so here we use the, the, the first model, it's called um, SDB IOPs model. Um, why we use, apply this model? Because for this region, the, the water, yeah, the water uh, is quite uh, special homogeneous. So we, the first step, we detect the shallow water and deep water after we derive the IOPs from the deep water and then apply the IOPs and the remote sensor reflectance uh, to derive, estimate the uh, water depths from the shallow water. So we can see that, yeah, we have the institute data uh, provided by CDUC. Um, is labeled as the is labeled as the um, white blocks. So the validation shows the area is about uh, uh, less than one meter, about uh, sixty-eight uh, centimeters. Another case is um, from Franklin. Uh, we applied the same model and. Uh, the, the validation shows the area is uh, about one meter, but here uh, the water is uh, deeper than, than the previous uh, case. Uh, the third case is uh, for the acetyl. In this area, we, yes, we, we applied the same model, but the IOPs was not derived from the deep water, but uh, 
from uh, Institute Data provided by uh, UCAF. Here we do the validation. Um, you can see for this area, the, 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 the area is, um, is about uh, 1.50 meters, and as you can see, the, the, the under estimation for some areas. I will explain that uh, after in the, in the discussion section. Um, the first case study is Ilevex. This has been presented yesterday by my colleague. Um, we validate this area use two two data sets. One is from a DFO, a Institute Data, and another from the, the newly rele new released NOLA 10 meters resolution data. So both the um, uh, validation shows a promising results, even if it's not uh, as good as the empirical model, but uh, the, the area is still less than one meter. Uh, the case for the Madeleine, well, this area we applied uh, a different, another model. Because uh, in this area, the water is quite uh, dynamic, so the water is not uh, so special homogeneous. So uh, we didn't apply the model with the IOPs with, as an input. Instead, in this area, because the, the bottom, the sea floor is quite special homogeneous, it's, it's a sandy flow, uh, so we extracts the reflectance for the, for the sand, for the beach, and use that as an input to a laser model to estimate the, the best metric. So in, in this case, the area is, yeah, is, a, is a much higher, it's about uh, two meters, but the maximum water depth is also um, higher is uh, the maximum depth it could reach 20 meters. The next case uh, is in the Arctic region. Um, this is also presented yesterday, but use the uh, empirical model, but here we apply the um, physical model. The, by the validation, you can see the Area is about one meter, 50, uh, one point fifty meters. So, yeah, indeed, the as a, my colleague has presented yesterday, our empirical model has shown a very, um, very good result with very um, lower area, but our physical models isn't. It's not so. It's not as good as our physical model. There are some reasons could explain uh, why. So the first can be um, the water depths can be uh, underestimated because of the wrong detection of the optical shallow water. That issue is not because. In my opinion, it's not because of the model we use, but because of the data. It's, it's, it's very hard to even, um, our human beings use vision inter, inter, uh, interpretation. We cannot see where is the shallow water, where is the deep water. So when, when we labeled our data, we, we are not 100% sure it's uh, shallow water or deep water. It's very hard to, to, uh, to see the bottom for some waters. If the water is a uh, sea dam richer, it's uh, or turbid, it's very dark or very turbid, it cannot see the, the bottom. So this could be a reason. Another reason is um, uh, the physical model is sensitive to the bottom. Like uh, in the case of, if the bottom is seagrass, is very dark, the water depth can be overestimated. And in addition, 
The physical model is also sensitive to the pre-processing of the image, especially atmospheric correction. Here I'd like to uh, highlight the agency effects. Um, briefly, agency effects is like uh, the, um, when the sensor, when the sensor um, de detects uh, the, the certain area, a certain pixel, actually it's not only the photons or the light from that pixel, but it can also receive the light from the surrounding areas. It, that's the very critical in the coastal zone or in the inland uh, waters because of the contrast it's very high, so a lot of light from the land go to the sensor. So uh, that could uh, affect the, our physical model. Um, but unfortunately, they are, currently they are very rare. The algorithm can uh, correct the urgency effects. Um, very rare algorithm available. But recently, Actus, we have developed our algorithm. Actually, uh, to our knowledge, is the first algorithm that can uh, create the aerosol and agency effects at the same time. And uh, here's just an example in the city. We can see the agency effects is very strong in the, around the, along the land. It could reach uh, 30 about 30% of the reflectance is not from the water, but from the land. Our, our algorithm is called uh, GAC. So it's, it's, it's still um, a prototype, but uh, the performance we have validated, evaluated uh, using the, a, la a large number of uh, data sets collected from Canadian NICS, and the performance is, is, is very good. So in the next step, we, we will continue to uh, apply, uh, evaluate, evaluate our model uh, for the STB. And the final one is uh, about the uh, relative transfer model. Actually, the, uh, the present model we use, the, it didn't uh, take account of uh, like uh, sedum fluorescence, uh, but sedum fluorescence could affect uh, the spectrum a lot. So these are the limitations, and uh, they are also the points we are going to improve in the next step. Actually, we just uh, obtained our new funding from from uh, Quebec Uni Innovation to. Um, extend our project on SDB. So to conclude, so um, we have uh, developed our physical model, even though it's n not as good as the empirical model as we showed yesterday, but it has a great potential to be continuously improved with the improvement of the relevant uh, uh, physical models and techniques like uh, atmospheric correction and uh, what transfer models. And the reason why we uh, developed the empirical model and also the physical model, because the physical model has the advantage that the empirical model doesn't have. That is, the physical model, we don't, we don't uh, use the institute data, even some areas we don't have the institute data. It's hard to reach the area. We can also apply our physical model. So it has a very uh, great uh, potentials for the for the future. Um, so that's my presentation. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Yang Kun. Uh, we have time some for for question. Uh, any question from the audience? It was a bit technical. I do have some question. <laughs> um, so you 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 mentioned IOPs, but I'm pretty sure uh, not so many people know what is IOPs. Can you explain a little bit? Uh, 
IOPs. Nitrogen is an uh, inherent optical uh, property of the water. You know, when the light penetrates the water, it will inter interact with the uh, with the components in the water, so the water can absorb and scatter the light. Mm. So the IOPs include the absorption of the water as well as the back scattering of the water. Exactly. So the, we are talking about absorption and uh, backscattering of yes. uh, the water column. So turbidity, organic yeah. matter, chlorophyll A, and so on. Mm. So um, this is one thing I want uh, the other uh, question is about uh, the atmospheric correction. You mentioned uh, atmospheric correction. Um, can you explain um, what are the main component of the atmospheric uh, correction that are has to be taken into account? Uh, okay. Okay. Actually, the atmospheric correction is the most important uh, procedure um, in what color remote sensing because uh, a large a large uh, number of the lights like photons they are coming from the atmosphere as aerosol and uh, molecules and they also um, absorb the, the 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 photons so that's the um, why it's so important um, for the correction, we have to uh, remove the, like the, um, correct the absorbing of the gas, absorbing of aerosols, molecules, and also the scattering of, of that uh, component. And also the agency effects, I highlighted a lot about the agency effects. That's a, it's a very critical to, um, inland waters or coastal zones, remote sensing. En français, on appelle ça l'effet de l'environnement. En passant, le, le adjacency effect, c'est l'effet de l'environnement. Euh, Mathieu? Yes, thank you. Uh, can you explain why you put at uh, one of the first steps of your uh, methodology uh, the uh, detection of shallow waters. Uh, often I saw that uh, people calculated the, who tried to calculate the depths in SDB for all the, the waters. Uh, and is it for uh, optimization in your algorithm just to, to do calculation on, on the shallow waters? Or is there any reason? Um, actually, we want our models or our uh, um, processors can do, can map the bathymetry totally automatically without any manually post-processing. So that's why we have to detect the shallow water in the first step. If, if we, yeah, we can also um, estimate the bathymetry for all of the areas, no matter shallow or deep water, but that means if our model, especially our physical model, it's applied to the, uh, the, uh, the deep water, but we, um, we assume the reflectance is uh, some are from the bottom, but not all from the water column. That cause, cause the, like as I show, I was show already, it cause the underestimation of the water depths. Any other question? Yes. Yeah, hi. Uh, great presentation. Really appreciate it. Um, so it's the third presentation I heard about the empirical versus the physical model of, of satellite drive bathymetry. And, you know, my understanding is, you know, the empirical really relies heavily on the quality of your in situ data for the training or calibration. And then the, the physical model really relies heavily on your simulations and models. And um, you know, so I guess, you know, in your opinion, which, which tool is best applied where, or how do you decide? Um, yeah, 
if, if some area we have left institute data, as I talked before, the empirical model perform better, outperform the physical model in the current stage because of the, some uh, limitations I have uh, discussed in the discussion section. There are so many limitations rela relevant to other uh, technology or algorithms. But if we don't have enough institute data, like um, in the Arctic region, we don't have, there are many regions it's hard to reach, so means we don't have enough data for the model training. For the empirical model training, we can apply our physical model. And I believe, we believe in the future with the other relevant uh, technical improvements, our physical model can be continuously improved. Thank you very much, uh, Yang Kun. Thank you. Uh,